Hi everyone, I am Vishal Peter. I secured a rank of 27 in GATE 2019. So in this video, I am not talking about any GATE preparation strategies. If you are serious enough about GATE, by now you would have seen a lot of GATE preparation strategy videos by various GATE previous year toppers and experiences and all that. So you can look at all that and find out the best strategy for yourself. Uh, so in this video, I am not talking about that. Here we are not talking about what you should study, where to study from and all that. But in this video, we are talking about one specific aspect in your GATE preparation. That is how to make the best use of previous year GATE question papers. So uh, any previous year GATE topper will tell you that solving previous year gate question papers is a very important aspect in your gate preparation like without solving previous year gate question papers you can't expect to get a good rank in gate so now comes the question how should we solve previous year gate question papers how should we approach previous year gate question papers so in this video i am talking about one strategy to approach previous year question papers which has helped me a lot and i think it can help you as well a lot in your preparation so before coming into that i have classified previous year gate question papers into three broad categories one is question papers from years 2019 till 2014 so if you look at the papers from 2019 to 2014 you will see that all of these have more or less the same pattern the pattern is very much same between 2014 and 2019 uh, from 2014 15 and 16 i think there were more than up to 17 i think there were more than one sets for each year 18 and 19 i think there's only a single set in the paper now all the questions in 2000 question paper 2014 and 2019 will be very similar in the pattern there will be 55 computer science questions and 10 aptitude questions somewhere between 2016 to 2017 2016 or 2015 you will start seeing a few one or two out of syllabus questions that will be software engineering numerical methods and then pnp class all that became out of syllabus in 16 or 17 somewhere at that time so you'll start seeing a few out of syllabus questions in 2014 but that is negligible it will be only one or two questions now that is class one starting from 2013 to 2009 you can broadly divide into class in the second class of question papers so here also in 2009 and uh, 13 also the pattern is kind of similar to 2019 but then you will start noticing some differences the number of out of syllabus question will start increasing from this point onwards and also there will be no numerical type questions in to, from starting from 2013 to backwards i think till then they were using omr sheets in the paper so i think they could not ask numerical questions that starts from 2014 onwards numerical type questions to 2013 onwards uh, it is all uh, a b c d multiple choice type questions so till 2009 also the pattern is almost similar to 2019 only it is not very different but starting from 2008 to backwards you will see that the question paper is very much different from what we have in 2019 you will see that there are cs and it papers there are different question papers as as, as such and also the number of question papers starting from 2018 2008 onwards to backwards is more than the usual 65 questions we have in 2019 in the current pattern we have 55 cs questions and 10 aptitude type question uh, that is more or less same till 2009 i think in 2009 there were 60 questions only but still that is almost same but 2008 onwards you will see there are 85 computer science questions and there are no aptitude type questions and it's not just that also from 2008 onwards you will see that the questions asked can be either very easy or very hard as well there are some topics which might seem out of syllabus to someone uh, writing gate in 2019 there it is not out of syllabus but they are asking us about very uh, they are asking us about topics which we don't usually study or solve many questions in that type of questions also you can start from 2008 onwards going backwards so now that we have divided the question papers into various classes so how should we start solving the question paper so i am talking here about one strategy which helped me a lot so what i did was i started solving question papers from 2011 onward so first of all what you should do is you should finish your entire syllabus uh, you should not skip any part in your syllabus finish everything and while you are studying don't look at any of the previous year question papers don't solve previous year question papers if you are uh, following the video lectures by Ravindra Abhidavala sir you will see that uh, in up to years up to 2014 in every paper like one or two or three questions maybe he will solve in his video lectures so that is fine it helps you with your preparation and understanding the subject better but more than that don't try to solve previous year question paper save it for the end of your preparation so what you should do is 
finish all the topics while you are learning you can solve test series as much as you want whatever works for you do that learn your topics solve test series and all that and after you are done with your preparation come to the previous year question papers and what you should do is what i actually did was i started solving from 2011 onwards i solved every question paper in a time simulated manner in a three hour window just like i was giving gate exam i solved each paper starting from 2011 onwards uh, during my preparation so what you should do is you should allot yourself three hours uh, stay composed and then start solving question paper write down all the answers and then even questions which you need to mark for review and all that do that question which you need to which you think you need to come back and solve mark it for review all that you do and stop the uh, giving the paper at three hours solve it a question paper do it for three hours don't solve any more questions after the three hours so what advantage you will get by doing this is there are two advantages one is you solve a question paper for three hours write down your answers and then uh, Calculate your mark. Count your mark at the end of three hours. Look at the answer key, official answer key. You can see and then look at the question. See how much mark you got and then compare it with what students who wrote the gate paper in that year got. That data is available from 2011 onwards. You can find it online. There are various sites which will provide you that data. So compare your mark with whatever mark the students got that year and find out if you were giving that paper in that year let us say 2011 so if you're giving your paper in 2011 what rank you would have got in that year so this will help you to identify how much you are prepared and where you stand uh, with respect to your gate this year and that rank won't be much different from what you can expect in your actual gate now that is one thing you can find out the level of your preparation and the other thing is that you can even find out missing topics so while doing this i have listed out all the benefits of uh, doing this one by one so we'll go through this now the first benefit of doing this is that you will learn better about time management how to approach the paper so what i found what when i was solving when i started from 2011 onwards and i was solving paper in a timely manner but what i noticed was in the initial years 2011 till a few papers but i saw that i could barely finish all the questions in three hours like i could only finish like maybe 60, 60 to 65 questions in that much time and I could not actually come back and uh, reserve any time for coming back and reviewing the questions. I could never used to get time for doing that. So I actually found out that I had to uh, do my time management stuff better and I needed to uh, do the questions faster. So that's the first benefit of doing uh, solving question paper in this manner so towards the end when I was doing 2018 or 19 papers actually I could solve the papers in 2 hours and 45 minutes and I could reserve the rest of the time for reviewing questions for question which I marked for review solving those questions and also reviewing uh, my calculations in some numerical type questions you could do you should do that also that as well so actually uh, again this is a very personal thing you should find out in how many hours you should solve the question paper you should set a target you should never the target should never be that you will solve the question in three hours it should be lesser than that for me the target set by me was two hours and 45 minutes that's what i used to do i think there are people who would set the target for two hours 30 minutes as well so two hours 30 minutes will be a bit too much i feel but again it's a personal thing you should find out how much time you should allot yourself so while doing that allot yourself that much time try to finish all the questions in whatever time you are setting for yourself and the rest of the time do review questions which you did could not answer come and answer those questions and also if you need to review some calculations and all review that as well so that's time management the second advantage is that you will get better at avoiding silly mistakes now silly mistakes is something i think every single person who is giving gate will complain about i don't, i'm not sure but i think even the person who got first rank might complain that he lost a few marks due to silly mistakes for me personally, I lost three marks due to silly mistakes uh, in this year's paper. But that is something you can't avoid. Maybe you can't avoid it 100%, but you can reduce it to a lot. When I was doing paper in 2011 and all, I used to make around six plus marks. I used to lose around six plus marks doing silly mistakes only. And actually, do, losing six plus marks in silly mistakes make a very huge impact in your gate rank. 
so if you are in the ranks of 200 or 300 if you lose six plus mark you will lose your ranks in hundreds due to silly mistakes so actually i identified the portion where i was making silly mistake i was making a lot of silly mistake in calculation parts in numerical questions and that too like i'll almost finish the question i would know the answer but then i'll miss the final step also one more thing i noticed was i usually made silly mistakes when the time was very less when towards the end of the paper if i was having less time i will do all the calculation faster and the number of silly mistakes actually increased so you need to solve all the papers in a timely manner and then find out how many silly mistakes you are making and then you need to identify where all you are making silly mistakes work on it and reduce it so that towards the end like when you are solving eight 2018 or 19 paper the number of silly mistakes you should be making should be one or two marks maximum you should uh, you should try to reduce this even further so one or two marks losing is fine but you should never lose more than that the next advantage is that you can for yourself you can form a strategy on how to approach the paper there are people who will solve the one mark questions first and then there are people who will solve two mark questions first and then do the one mark questions later there will be people who will try to solve the numerical questions first and all that so these are strategies you should form the strategy based on your own experience while doing paper you will start feeling like maybe you should solve the one mark question first so what i used to do was i would solve all the one mark questions 25 minute questions in around 30 to 45 minutes i tried to complete that so that for the two mark questions i will get more time so that's what i try to do again this is a personal thing you should find out which strategy is best for you and the other thing is using the mark for review button in the most efficient manner questions you can't answer you should mark for review and also questions you answered but you think you should come back and look at it again those questions also you should answer and mark for reviews how to best effectively use the mark for review option in the gate paper that also you can form by solving question paper in this format so solve papers after solving a few papers you will feel like in which manner you should be approached the other thing is that you should remain composed throughout the exam now this is a very important point which i think many people would miss out so i'll tell a personal experience one is that during uh, while i was doing this somewhere for one question paper i actually uh, spent more than 15 minutes trying to solve one question and i didn't actually realize it while i was doing that and only after solving that question i realized that i spent a lot of time doing that so when i realized when i saw that i after doing that i saw that for the rest of the questions i had very less time than what i had allotted previously so when that happens you will start panicking and if it happens in gate exam during your actual gate exam you will panic a lot and then that will seriously affect the rest of the questions which you will be doing thus sometimes even very silly very silly mistake it can increase if you are panicking and so while doing the paper you will actually see some points where you will start panicking if you will see that you don't know the answer to a few question papers uh, a few questions uh, back to back then you might start panicking all that you need to catch while doing papers in this format if you are feel you are panicking still remain composed as best as you can and keep on with the question paper for three hours do it get your mark compare it with the previous year what the previous year students got you will see that it might be lesser a rank your rank that you are getting might be lesser than what you are actually expecting because you didn't remain composed if such an issue happens so if you can catch all this while you are practicing papers in this way if that happens during the actual gate exam it will you will be equipped for that you will be better prepared to handle that but if that happens for the first time during gate exam it will be very hard to get out of it so it will help you even to remain composed during the exam Finally, the obvious benefit that is that you can pick up missed topics in your preparation and also you can identify your weak areas. So, while solving your, the question paper, you will see that definitely there will be many questions which you won't be able to answer. So, if you the questions you were not able to answer, it might be because of two reasons. One is that the question was very hard. In that case, fine, look at the answer, learn it so that you will be better equipped to solve similar questions. And the other case is that you didn't know the topic, you didn't study the topic. So, identify those and then go and study those topics in this time. Again, it, it is, I'm not saying that you should study an entire subject, you should be done with your preparation and only after that you should start solving the paper in this manner. But if you actually, even after completing syllabus, if you missed some important point, you can pick up in this format other is identifying weak areas if you are solving if you see that back to back in compiler design topic you are 
uh, making mistakes then you should identify that it is a weak area for yourself so you should uh, go and study that a bit better in a better format and then after that continue with the paper solving and see whether you are improving so many of these you can the time management and silly mistakes and all actually you can uh, get better prepared for it even by solving mock gate papers but solving gate papers i feel is the best way to learn about time management and silly mistake there is no mock gate which can be exactly equal to gate paper the, all the mock gates will try to make the questions hardness of the questions almost equal to the gate paper but there will be nothing which will be exactly equal to gate paper other than previous year gate question papers and also the marks you get in mock gate you can compare it with what other students are getting to see where you stand but the marks you get in such way when you are doing solving this paper in such a way the marks you get you can be definitely sure that from the preparation what rank you can get because you will be comparing it with what previous year students got so i feel that is the better way of doing preparation based on previous year gate question papers so i hope this video helped you in your preparation. Thank you.